Before we start this video, I just want to take you on a quick trip down memory lane. Now, after owning a Mark III, a Mark IV, two Mark Vs, and a Mark VI Golf, I decided to get a Mark VII Golf R. And we did a stage 99 build on it, including a turbo upgrade and a whole bunch of parts from Revo. This Golf was ridiculous. In fact, we called it a Golf R supercar because it ended up being able to do zero to 100 in 2.8 seconds and did the quarter mile in low 11 seconds, which was ridiculous. Now the car was so good, I thought it was too good, so I sold it and I went and bought a Lotus. Now a Lotus Exige is the perfect car for people that don't have any friends and don't actually need to use their car to do anything because the maximum payload in the boot is 50 kilos. And this got me thinking, is there a car that has the practicality of the Golf but a little bit of emotion or maybe a little bit of drama that you would get from a supercar? Now a lot of people that I know have been speaking about this car with the kind of reverie that is usually reserved for supercars, a car that is practical but a car that is born of supercar spirit. In fact, a car that one journalist described as created by someone who must be completely nuts and decided it would be a good idea to get a Lamborghini 5 litre V10 engine, quite literally saw it in half and then jam it into the engine bay of a hatchback. Everybody, this is my new daily, an Audi RS3. This is Audi's answer to those that want something a bit crazy and ridiculous from their hatchback. From the factory, these are zero to 100 in around four seconds, which is ridiculous for a car that you can also take to the shops. But along with that ridiculousness also comes a ridiculous price tag. This is the car for people who want a little bit more Wiener Schnitzel in their Lagerstein, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Because okay. you could go and buy a stock A3. Aren't these three times more expensive than a stock A3, which is what it's based on? Well, this is an A3 and they stick some stuff on it to yeah. try and get some more money. Which I everyone think, does. I mean, you can exciting. buy a Subaru Impreza and then get an STI and that's a different world. Apparently. It's just, it's you put this next to an A3 and you go, oh, they do look very similar, but this is a different car. It's a, well, it's a different car. In this format, with these options on the road, this car new is over $100,000. Dollars, or in the UK, I think around sixty thousand pounds. With options, I think maybe sixty-five thousand pounds. Now, I bought this car second-hand, sight unseen, broken from another state, and broken. Yeah, actually undrivable. So <laughs> I got this car for about the same price as a Golf, uh, which was excellent. But more on that shortly. Let's take you on a little walk around and introduce you to this absolutely mad German hatch that is like a replacement for my Golf, which I've been missing every day. I want my Golf R back. I said to Marty, I want my Golf R back. And it's like, I don't want to just do the same thing. You can't go back to the same. I no. got to do something different. So I Next bought a Volkswagen step. RS3. You did, with an extra cylinder. We're and that engine. We're getting to that soon. That Marty. engine. Okay, we'll don't, talk about the don't engine. Don't blow right. the engine too sure. soon. No worries. Because we're going to be getting to that it's shortly. What I do. Let me show you some of the external features, people. Because journalists, they don't like the look of this car at all, do they, Mark? No, I actually have some journalistic quotes that I'm, I'm holding. I'd like to like to share with you. Bland. Yeah. I looks don't care. looks like a fridge. It does. It does look like a fridge. Yeah, that's it's white. Fair. It's white, and fridges have wheels on them. Yep. Lacks visual emotion. That okay. sounds like something. Yeah. Whoever wrote that's an idiot. Yeah, that's like, what is, what is visual emotion? Is that like the new civics? Like, does it have to look like it's been shut out by a robot to have visual emotion? I think that's what they're getting at. Okay. Not very special looking for the money. Special looking for the money. Yeah, You've but I like that. You've got to pay lots of that. money to have I like that about it. I like that it's not very See, special See, I think your looking. Lotus looks too special. I mean, the Lotus is crazy. You can't drive around in the Lotus without people stopping you everywhere you go. And people who don't, that's the thing, people who don't know cars will stare at a Lotus. People that don't know cars will not stare no at this. One and will not staring at cars it. is actually a good thing some of the time, a lot of the time, actually. Yeah, no one will look twice at this. No. Police or otherwise, and which my is favorite, sometimes a thing. My favourite. Your favourite. Looks boring and is too easy to drive. Okay, whoever wrote that is a <laughs> moron. You can't do DSG, it has to be manual. You can't do this, it has to be this. Get a horse. Yep. Get a horse, yeah. Because that's as pure as you. Can. I mean, run next to the horse. Let a horse on your back, Martin. That's it. 
and then carry the horse. That's as pure as transport's gonna get. Inside the car is very functional. I was about to say very Audi, but I have no idea what I'm talking about. Have you ever owned an Audi before? Uh, no. I've never owned one either. No, so this so. is this is first time experiences for me. This one comes with a steering wheel, which is amazing. It's got some little flappy paddles on there. Uh, it's DSG. Seven speed. DSG. Seven speed. Uh, this is the facelift model. So up here on the screen, it's um, it can be set up in all sorts of different ways and you can just hit that and there's a bunch of different views that you can set up. Up here, it's got something that kind of comes out a little bit like an octopus's penis. Have you ever seen what they, is that what they look it like? It looks like that. Um, so this here is where you can control all of your bits and pieces. It's not touch screen, but you can go through here and uh, adjust all of your different things of how the car will drive. This one has the adaptive suspension, so you can go in here and you can change all the different ways the car looks and feels and sounds. I've got no... Slick top. No sunroof. I've got no sunroof. If you want to move the chair, uh, a lot of people don't like this. You actually have to move it like this. We're using your legs. Uh, using your legs. No motors. Um, some people are unhappy about that because the two times a year they move their seat, they want to sit there and go... Yeah. The soundtrack is what gets you because up the front yeah. is where things get exciting. So let us give you a little look at what's going down there because that is pretty much, I think, the only reason why people buy this car over an S3 or yeah. a Golf R. So where does all your money go and where is the emotion and the drama. There it is. It's right there. Yeah. So that there yep. is an inline five cylinder engine made by the same gentleman that make the V10 for the Audi R8. And that is an absolutely ridiculous engine to have in a little hatchback. Between 275 and 295 kilowatts, they call it a 400 horsepower engine, two and a half litres and five cylinders, and doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Now, the, the two litre Golf engine it's amazingly capable. It was doing 11s in your car. Tried and tested, but amazing. they sound flatulent. But they sound like shit. Yes. These sound amazing. Something about the five still, something about the note of it. It just, just, it's very unique and it makes this car, I reckon, because regardless of how frigid the rest of it is, you cannot argue that that is not awesome. I think it's why people refer to these as like a mini supercar or a little hatchback supercar because of what they sound like and because of the technology of this that's born from that kind of Lambo R8 V10 yep. stuff. Yep. Now, to get that much power down to the ground, um, the RS actually has a staggered wheel set up, but it is opposite to how things are normally set up. So the front are actually wider than the back. So two five fives there's two the five fives on the front and there's two three fives on the back. Uh, of course, I got this car a bit thrashed and there, there's like different, there's different <laughs> tires on it, doesn't it? We're, we're gonna be fixing that. That's the source, isn't it, Martin? That's the hot source. The fact it's got the DSG behind it, which you can shift really fast. You can tune them to shift even faster. Yep. You can add boost, you can add turbos. There's lots of mods out there just old enough that there's like starting to be a good aftermarket for this kind of stuff. Yeah. And it, it just it just works. They've developed it over so long. I feel like we're at, we're getting near peak petrol with this thing, man. Yeah. Just to give your earballs a little taste of what this inline five cylinder sounds like, just reminding you this car is completely stock right now. It won't be tomorrow, uh, but right now it's completely stock. So have a listen to what it sounds like from the factory. Sounds so good. So there it is. It's one of the few cars that when people actually put straight through exhaust on them, they sound really good. Like yeah. I know that the resonator delete on a Golf is like a thing that people do all the time. It sounds like ass. It just does, doesn't it? It's like, if you've done it, it doesn't sound good. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, it's just loud and obnoxious. But anyway, what I love about that is also you've got the adjustability. Yeah. So it means your neighbors won't hate you for it. You would have to be pretty baller to buy one of these brand new. Like I would never do it. And how did, um, but so how did, how did you get it cheap then? Well, so for starters, the usual way I bought cars, I bought it sight unseen. Yep. I bought it interstate. Sort um, by cheapest. And just sort by cheapest. This was the cheapest white one that I could find. Now, when I did get this, uh, it arrived on a truck. Uh, it was broken, so it was mm. undrivable. Um, and it needed parts from Germany to actually make it work again. And those are normally things that would scare people off. I didn't even know that was the case. I just thought, oh, it's cheap and, you know, anyway. Do you think well, someone has just put it in the too hard basket? Yeah, you know, sometimes maybe. Sometimes even with a newer car, it's just like, oh, I don't want the hassle and just get rid of it. Well, whatever. particularly because if you took the car down to Audi and went, it doesn't work, yeah. they would go, we can't actually fix it. We oh. need stuff from Germany. And I was willing to wait. So basically the, the problem was is that it came down on a truck 
I took it off, I was like, cool, I'm gonna go for a drive. And what the car would do was it would just change gears by itself, which was frightening. So you'd just be driving along in, in auto full mode. auto, yeah. and then all of a sudden, it would go into like a manual performance mode, change down a few gears and then redline, which looked like this. Just so I can get around, I'll move the stick over and put it in manual so I can hold a gear. That didn't work either. Oh, right. So there was, there was something majorly wrong up here. So I took the car down to Audi and Five Dock and they checked it and it turned out that there was a problem with the steering wheel. So the, the paddles didn't work, but actually there was a whole bunch of stuff that didn't work. So possibly uh, they said someone might have spilled a drink on it or something, oh, right. because lots of stuff around the front of the car didn't work. I contacted the company that I would bought it from, which was a dealership in Queensland. And I said, the car doesn't work, I have these problems. And they said, it didn't have any of those problems when it was with us. You know, we're not aware of there being any particular issues. And so I went back down to our Audi and Five Dock and I said to them, because I know enough about badge cars now, does it keep a log of errors? Yes, it does. Of course it does. And there was a yeah. log of every single time the car had had an error. So what I did was I had a look at the dates of those errors and guess what? <laughs> those 27 errors coincided with Never time did it when we owned that it. it was at the dealer. Yeah. So uh, I reckon there was 27 times before I owned the car that someone had had that Where experience. Where someone's head almost went through the windscreen. It may have been the previous owner. It may yeah. have been the dealer. I don't know. Yeah, it's so possible the dealer got, got shafted as well. Well, I contacted like, oh, the perfect. dealer again and went, hey, um, this is the problem. And they went, that's right. No, there is a problem. Oh, remember now. We took it to Audi and we got it fixed. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know how you could have done that because yeah. the Audi centre down here did a check on their database and all of the parts required are not available in Australia. It actually has to be a German fix. So what ended up happening is new flappy paddles and modules and a whole bunch of modules actually at the front of the car got replaced. I got to do all of that on warranty, which was really good. Sweet. Now it's time to go for a drive. So that's about everything you need to know. I know some people are going to go there a bit boring, um, but you you know, I've been driving around in a Lotus yeah. and I've been having the pure experience and I've got the hemorrhoids to prove it. <laughs> and so now I think it's probably time. <laughs> and there's still like, left leg. You know, and <laughs> I just, just a daily man. I just, I really miss my golf as a daily. Yeah, so I'm going to see how this constantly. goes. Um, is it going to be modified? Of course it is. Um, the yeah, mods have already warranty. started um, <laughs> uh, arriving. Uh, the, the warranty will be, um, uh, no, it'll be gone. It'll, it'll be massaged soon. Um, uh, anyway, Martin. Should we go? Yeah. Should we go for a drive? Yeah. All right. And then down to the racetrack. Yeah? Yeah. Good. All right. Okay. Come Let's with go. us, everybody. Let's go for a drive. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fast. Whoa. <laughs> How's it feel? Like a fast golf is and what it feels like. And a firm golf. A firm golf. Eh? Nice inside. People yeah, call it nice. Bland. Like, oh, it's bland, it's bland. It's, it's totally functional and comfortable for a little car. It's yes. not big, I can reach that. Yes. You know, I can, can reach the other side, that's a small car. And now I can actually drive it because these paddles should be working now. Oh yeah, manual. It sounds good, such an interesting note. Awesome. Well, Martin, there's only so much we can do on the street. Which is not much, yeah. It is time to hit the racetrack. to see how the RS3 goes at speeds that we're not legally allowed to do on the street, so we're heading to the racetrack. I'll be logging my laps using the Garmin Catalyst, which is a driving performance optimizer. All right, a nice easy lap. See how we go. Feeling good. Nice and warm. So there's a bunch of different modes on this car. I'm in the uh, dynamic mode. This feels exactly what you'd think the car should feel like. It's kind of predictable, fast, grippy, and really impressive performance when you come out of those corners. Let's see how we go down the straight. Lotus I got to about 190, I think the BRZ I got to 200 and something. Starting 230. But I don't think my uh don't think my tires are warm yet. I've got some crazy looking thing behind me, some KTM thing. 
think I'm running out of tyre. I think that's what's happening. Alright, up here. Let's go down to the corner where I came off last time. 40 on the brakes hard. Around the corner, go wide, power on. There's another one of these crazy cars behind me. The RS3, what performance! Amazing! A little bit of understeer, finding the grip, powering on. Let's go! 150 k's an hour. 90, 220. That's a 155. A, a very, very fast time. My Garmin here is telling me how I'm going around these corners compared to last time. I just have to break into them. You don't want to be breaking on the corner. You want to be getting around the corner nice and smooth and then accelerating out of the corner. So that's what I'm trying to do this time. But my first lap is a similar time to my uh, quite heavily modified Turbo BRZ. So I'm pretty happy with that. Gripping on for dear life. I think there is a Michelin tire upgrade absolutely due for this car. The speed is phenomenal. It is absolutely phenomenal on this car. I'm just, I'm in awe of how fast it is. It's just incredible. This is so good. It's just really good. It's just really, really good. Hard on the brakes, searching for grip, desperate for grip. There's a Porsche right on me. No doubt he's gonna go around me now. So he'll be able to out grip me on this corner. There you go, off you go in your very expensive Cayman. That's called a GT3, I believe, that car. I think that's a fast and expensive one. Right, come on, let's go. Let's go, Mr. RS3. Let's see if I can really push it around this corner, wind it on. Use all of the track, wind it, going wide, yes! Come on RS3, let's go, let's go! Down the straight, 180, 200. It's a 154.87 in a stock hatchback. That is absolutely crazy. What an impressive car and a car that you could daily, every day, no worries, and it's such a sleeper. It doesn't look like it's a fast car, but you can come to an advanced track day with supercars, and not only kind of keep up, but also have a really, really good time. It's amazing. Squeeze it on, there's just a little bit of latency when I squeeze it on. I can see where I lost my time because my Garmin is telling me as I go, it's telling me what corners I can go faster on, where I haven't gone fast enough, where I'm losing time, where I'm gaining time. It's an incredible way of uh, gauging your ability, but also learning how to drive a track. Thank you so much to Garmin for sponsoring our show and for supplying us uh, with this amazing technology to help us get our lap times better. Maybe I need to swap over to full manual. Here we go. Now when I come out the corner, Let's see if I can squeeze it on earlier. There it is, that's better. I think that's the end of our session. Oh, that's the end. You can't actually tell really how fast you're going. It's only when you look down. The power delivery is so smooth and it's so consistent. I just can't believe how sedate it looks, but how brutal it is. I'm back in the badge, man. Like this is this is so good. Everything's just a bit more. It's just a bit more honed, a bit more power, a bit harder, a bit more built for purpose. But now, let's go start the mods. 
So there it is, that is my new daily. Very impressed with the track time. I got a 154, which is in line with the best times I've ever got around that track. And hitting over 230 k's an hour down the straight, I can tell you, was, uh, was a little bit crazy, but very enjoyable. It is a fat looking car. I know people will criticize it and say it kind of looks boring. All the things that people don't like and all the criticism is the reason I do like it. I do think it looks a bit bland. I do think it doesn't really turn heads, but for a kind of a factory made sleeper, you know, it's got pumped guards, it's a bit wider, it's a bit lower. I actually really like that. And once it's got some proper tires on it that aren't just shredded off and delaminating, <laughs> um, it's got some major potential, particularly once we tap into the hidden potential of that mad engine. Now there is an ever shrinking field of um, performance stuff like this. Um, peak petrol emissions is coming into it. That stuff's starting to get shut down. I think we're in a really interesting time where you can buy something that's this fast and this crazy, but still safe and still relatively clean is quite an amazing feat. But two and a half litre engine, DSG box, all that kind of stuff sounds amazing. It's a pretty cool thing. It is a cool thing. And you know what? People are going to start to struggle, I think, to get really fast cars, other than electric cars, yeah, which is another argument about DSG versus yeah. manual, but then electric takes that to a whole other thing. Because I don't think anyone that's like in ridiculously um, fast Teslas is caring about changing gears really. and stuff. So that argument will die soon. But I also think that as new models come out and cars and engines are tightened down and clamped down for emissions, I think this car is going to be one of those classics like I really think it is that's yeah. like what you say peak petrol super fast yeah. running on dinosaurs yeah. and then soon we're just gonna clamp down and certainly some manufacturers already uh, are not continuing to make really fast hatches because they cannot uh, actually compete with all the restrictions that are being put and on still them. make money which is what it's about this wasn't invented just so we could go to the racetrack it was invented to turn a profit which it would have turned a healthy profit being that it's so much more expensive than the stock car that it's based on yeah but look we're going to see what's possible with this car for me i've never owned an audi before uh, i've never worked on one before i understand it's probably going to be similar to the golf but we are going to do slightly different mods this time that is going to be next episode we're going to modify it see how fast it can go and unlike the golf engine which does sound like ass, quite literally. This one here sounds amazing, so we are going to open that up. I'm always like, yeah. keep the resonator, keep the, but but. I but if you it. had to choose, RS3 or Posty bike? Yeah, I, don't, I See, knew, I I knew that would be a tough one. My Posty bike was 350 <laughs> bucks, but I actually love it. For you, Martin, RS3, M2, or AMG? Oh, oh, I, I really like this. Do you? you like it, so maybe I should do something different. No, what do you what do you actually like? Because I know it's taken you a little while to get into the vag. No, this is thick. Yeah? Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, getting, I'm, I'm one over. I don't hate the Vag. I just, I just don't quite understand it. But this, this is a particularly nice two and a half litre Vag. Yes. Yeah. I was considering getting a different number plate for it. And I went to the number plate builder and I was like going, what would we actually write on here? And so I was thinking you could get like the model name and the letters, which would be ARS3, which spells ass. <laughs> <laughs> Banned, not allowed. Let's go. All right, thanks everybody. Bop. We're leaving the white room. See you next time. Bop. Let's go get some mods. Bop. Bop.